first found out about Jesus when I was um, I was brought up in the Catholic Church, and I uh, I started to explore the option, the fact that he might actually be real. And I remember standing in a um, a very small Catholic church with stained glass windows, and I looked around, and I, f I followed I followed the pictures because I I just couldn't read so well then, and um, as I saw the snapshots, if you like. I became aware there's actually a story there that he actually went to a cross and, and he was like, he got whipped and he fell down a few times and then ended up on a cross. There's like 12 stations of it. And I remember just being impacted by that. To me, it was about the final one was on the cross. And I just felt that that's when he died for me. I was about seven, seven or eight. And it was, uh, it impacted me from that moment on really and I actually took up myself like a private language with him and was like well in the Catholic Church he taught things like um, he's, he's everywhere so I've never done all that so I used to test him and run down the street and do a left and a right hop and I'd say you didn't see that coming did you so I guess I was having a relationship with him then so the first time I heard about Jesus was approximately when I was 12 years old and this is a funny story because I studied in a Chinese school. The first time I heard about Jesus, it sounds like coconut tree in Chinese. And the first person who talked to me about it is my school teacher. And she was telling us how great is Jesus. And he's a savior, he's a god of love. And I was wondering behind like, who is this? What do you mean by a coconut tree that can do all this? So it is a very funny impression on my mind but it sort of stayed with me for the rest of my life. That's how I first come to know about, I mean heard about Jesus for the very first time. Yesu. 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 And with coconut tree? Coconut tree is so yes. Yesu. That's incredible. So when really? she was talking about Yesu, I was like, what Yesu? Because I had never heard of Jesus. So I was wondering, why is she talking about coconut tree? That's hilarious. Because I, I have yes. never heard about a God besides the God that I've seen on the idol. And, and it's the first time I, I've ever heard about Jesus. I can't believe that there are there's someone that is like that in the world, like a person who will love you as who you are and a savior. Because where can you find such such person or such God in the world? I have always have that feeling of fear of God because in my cultural context, God seems to be a very serious, a very far distant being. And you have you better behave yourself or else you you will get in trouble. So that's the kind of impression I have with God in my context. I never know God as a loving God in that sense. So the very first time I, I heard about him, it it feels amazing. It feels close. I have, I think I've had different stages of relationships with him. I grew up in a family that was Christian. We went to church, we enjoyed Sunday school, we sang hymns at night. We, I grew up um, not even watching much of TV. Our time was to sit down and sing to him. And I had one sister who was not confident about singing, but she just recorded us on tape singing, led by our mother, um, which was really lovely. Like Those are the stories that I remember of how much Jesus was present in my life growing up. Um, and when I was 11, um, I come from a very big family, I'm one of eight, the last of eight. I realized when I was 12 years old that I was the only one that my mother had named. So I just wanted to find out why. And I remember sitting under the mango tree on a traditional mat. And she told me um, when she was expecting me, she was quite unwell and the doctors didn't think I was going to survive. 
So they told her she needed to terminate because she was not going to survive it. But because she was such a strong Christian, she refused to do that because of her belief. And they tried to convince her that she had seven other kids. You know, one won't be too much. And she said she loved me and she was going to go ahead with um, the pregnancy, which she did. And I was born normal. But when she refused with the doctors at that point, um, she had a, her auntie who raised her up. Her name was Sophia. And she had died, so I never met her. But that aunt never spoke English or anything, but came to her dreams so often until I was born, giving her scriptures that everything was going to be fine. And she named me after her because she believed that God came through those dreams through her auntie Sophia, and I was named after her. Then I realized how much she sacrificed. Obviously, I didn't comprehend it as much at that time. I was still young and I just felt special. And from that time, she would call me a miracle child and I'd be like, oh, okay. But I really didn't go out and pray and thank God and Jesus and appreciate him more because I felt I was engaging in Christian life, Christian family. Um, we were learning a lot about who Jesus was, but I don't think I expressed or displayed how much I loved him because everything seemed right and I had people that were thinking about me in terms of Christianity until later on in life when I had experienced a lot of different things growing up and um, unfortunately some of those were where I lost people through death and I started asking if God did love me, where is Jesus right now? So I would sort of switch on and switch off with Jesus but continue to go to church and I would probably classify myself in my early life to mid-twenties as someone that just went to God, it was comfortable, I was in a comfort zone but I didn't really passionately reach out even knowing my own story about before I was born and what had happened and when I sat down one day reflecting on everything about my life I actually thought that's right he knew me before I was born and he protected me and this is my story and my mom told me you are named Sophia because you're precious and yes, I was precious, even now Christians would relate my name to a gemstone. But to me, it's not that. It's God knew who I was, God knew who I was going to become, God had a purpose for me, and I have now structured my life to realize those purposes and just go with, with my faith, obviously, to, um, you know, to demonstrate what the life of a Christian is and how much I've appreciated him giving me his life.